That was Call to Heroes by Miguel Johnson from his album, Citizen of the Stars. Greetings, Commanders, and welcome to Elite Week, your weekly source for all the news from in and around the Elite Dangerous Galaxy. I'm your host, Kai Zen. The goal of this show is to provide a clean description of anything and everything you might find of interest, along with easy links to the original sources. Since not all commanders are interested in the same things, you may find yourself clicking on many of these links and ignoring many others. That's great. My job isn't to tell you what to like, but rather to make you aware of all of it so you can decide for yourself. So let's get to it. Friday, March 20th, 2020. As always, we start off the week with Hutton Orbital Radio Podcast. This is the recording of the podcast that was recorded live on Twitch the previous day. There was a segment in memoriam of Commander Odie Moncrew, the Mad Punster. There was a report on Operation Hot Mess. The infrastructure failure was fixed, uh, and they are over 80.25% of the Galaxy Mug. They are on track for completion before uh, Virtual ECM. There was plenty of information about Virtual ECM, which will be happening on April 11th, and there are a lot more details to come, so check their site out. There was a notice that Fantasticon 2020 in August was canceled, and the LaveCon July 2020 is still undecided, but it's not looking great. Sagittarius I Magazine released episode 26 in both PDF and podcast form. And there's a war in Alpha Centauri. There's new neighbors, and the Hutton truckers aren't sure if they like it. And the entire episode was wrapped up with Watherspoon, uh, powerful people, This episode was on Denton Petraeus, Senator Denton Petraeus and Commander of the Imperial Fleet. And I've got to say, he outdid himself. I think this is the best one yet. The community event, the Crazy Colonia Corrosive Cargo Caravan, is still ongoing until April 1st. So this is your last week to get in and take part. The Galnet News Digest feed is now hosting the Powerful People segments that Commander Watherspoon does over at Hutton. He started off with the Ashling Duval segment, five minutes long and hilarious. So check it out. Next up, we have the Burr Pit with Witch Base News, seven minutes long. They talk about the EIC rares are free for a month on Operation Helping Hand. Commander Wicked Karma, who flew an E-rated Sidewinder with only 7.7 light year jump range all the way to Colonia, taking 3,500 jumps plus. ED Tutorials expanding to add the Flintlock Engineering and Buckyball Race Club to their flock. Uh, Operation Ida has a new app out. The new Sagittarius I magazine, foldathome.org, which is a group that Canon Research, the Hull Seals, um, everyone else seems to be joining up with, where you use your computer cycles to do advanced calculations on some form of protein folding that's supposed to be able to help figure out how to deal with COVID-19. They talk about the virtual ECM and the postponement of the face-to-face ECM. Frontier Development's working from home and the Burr Pit will be doing more events and putting out more content while they are self-isolating with a little bit of free time around the house. Next up, we've got Sagittarius Eye Magazine and podcast, issue number 26. This is the issue for the first quarter of 2020 or 3306 in game. It can contains a segment on surviving a trade community goal. It gives you all the tips on how to stay alive and open when you're out hauling. This isn't just for community goals. This is basically things to live by all the time. There's a segment on what are brown dwarfs. They're neither stars nor planets, but they're kind of both or somewhere in between. There's a segment on the obituary for Kahina Loren, aka Salome. There's an in-depth spotlight on Newton's Gambit, the group who is dedicated to living flight assist off and teaching other commanders the joys of flight assist off. The rare community spotlight is on the Penta prayer sticks and there is a entire story on the history and fall of Nova Imperium. This issue's featured expeditions will be Perseus Reach and the Orion Expeditions which are two very different expeditions but they're going to be linking up for some uh, intra expedition fun. There's an in-depth look at the lore tour of 33 Six that's about to be put on by Drew Wagar and stations you haven't visited, Explorers Anchorage, all the way out there, just a jump from SAG A. 
As always, Sagittarius Eye Magazine is cover to cover full of good stuff. And since we only get it four times a year, you gotta enjoy it while it's there. So I cannot highly enough recommend that you check it out in both PDF and podcast form. And Drew Wagar put out Evelyn's Story, a piece of elite fiction that was written in memoriam of a young commander taken too soon. It's out in the formats of audiobook, PDF, Mobi, and EPUB. This free ebook is uh, put out with donations suggested for the Alberta Children's Hospital Foundation. Beautiful and touching story. And uh, we at the Loose Screws Podcast Network cannot thank True enough for his touching kindness. Commander Exegius welcomed Crimson Gamer 99 for his Friends on Friday series. It was a two hour and 15 minute stream. The pilot put out The Juggernaut, a little one minute video highlighting some of the cool stuff about the ship of the same name from the game Stellaris Foundations. It's pretty cool. Primetime Casual continued his series, The Casual Guide to the Galaxy, Season 1, Episode 8, with The Scotsman, a five minute long video. This video highlights Pamesh. It has the best canyons in the galaxy for flying or race driving. It's just an amazing little spot in the bubble that is a jewel that all commanders should visit and test their metal against. And if the name of the video didn't give you a clue as to who was behind the stick, then you just haven't been paying attention. And to wrap up Friday, we've got scientist and futurist Isaac Arthur with The Fermi Paradox, Whispers in the Night, a 24 minute long video that is amazing. Which brings us to Saturday, March 21st. First up, we've got Blind Pew with a 13 minute long video, Does Piracy Pay? He goes out and gets his low temperature diamonds the dishonest way uh, for funsies. But since the last I had heard, low temperature diamond pirating wasn't even a thing that was possible anymore. I'm glad to know that you guys have the option. Next up, we have the Yamix with a three minute long short little video entitled 3303-3. Uh, it's a cool little short film. There's no salt. Check it out. Hydlide Gaming put out Bounty Hunting 2020. Nine minute long how to uh, take you into the world of bounty hunting. Next up is a pair of cool little videos from Scott Manley. The first is an eight minute long video entitled What Wormholes Would Actually Look Like According to Physics. And the second is a 15 minute long video entitled Wormholes Get Weirder, where he dives deeper into the subject. And next we have Commander Exorcist from SPVFA, who made a little video called Out There, season two, episode eight, four minutes long. This is continuing his series of just playing some music while showing you mind-blowingly awesome graphics. Uh, just top-notch stuff. Which brings us to Sunday, March 22nd. And as always, we start with Throwback Sunday, where I bring you some cool stuff that you may have missed before and should check out now. For starters, we've got the documentary from 2019, Apollo 11. This amazing documentary got a 99% on Rotten Tomatoes and won a Sundance Award. It is amazing. If you, like me, are a huge fan of all things NASA, you really owe it to yourself to check this one out. Next up is a cool little article from fizz.org. Team obtains the best measurement of a neutron star size to date. 11 kilometers, about the size of a mid-sized European city, they say. Hmm. Then we have Carl Sagan from his quote-unquote lost lecture in 1994 entitled The Age of Exploration. It's an hour and a half long and it's great. And then we have an odd little one that you really should check out. Colin Ford, AKA Commander Phoenix Defire of Lave Radio fame. He has on the forums put out the Sanctimonious origin story. So check this out. He wrote an Elite Dangerous novel as part of a Kickstarter called Elite Chronicles Fiction Project. The Kickstarter seemed to have fallen through uh, but he kept on writing, and the upshot is that he has a 140,000 word elite novel uh, that he is tinkering with and editing and putting out sort of chapter by chapter on the forums for free. So check it out if you're interested in reading it and, uh, you know, maybe blow up that uh, forum thread and start some groundswell of action going and maybe we can get this thing published or something. I don't know. But if all you get is a very cool elite novel to read for free while you're stuck sitting at home, that's not bad either. 
Next up, we have a Universal Cartographics map of local nebulas. It's pretty awesome to check out and should give you some ideas of places to visit. This is followed by an old forum post by community manager Paige Harvey, a statement on cheating an elite dangerous. It tells you exactly why it's a problem and how to report it. Then we've got a Wikipedia for Sudarsky's gas giant classifications. It explains what all the different types of gas giants really are. Then we've got a video by Cool Worlds, Artificial Gravity, 32 minutes. Breaks down all of the challenges involved with dealing with long-term weightnesses and what we're gonna need to do to create gravity so that we can better colonize the galaxy. Also a video by Obsidian Ant, how to find black holes, a seven minute long video that will show you too how to find your very own undiscovered black hole and put your name on it. And lastly, we have the Perimeter Institute for Theoretical Physics with a one and a half hour long video, Warp Drive and Aliens, where they break down the math of how exactly a warp drive would work and what are our chances of actually getting to interact with other life forms out there. Which brings us back to Sunday the 22nd with SPVFA, their 2020 colors competition. This week it's green, four minute long video of some of the most amazing pictures and video clips you've ever seen set to the theme of green. Down to Earth Astronomy put out Help Fight COVID-19 While You Sleep, foldathome.org, a six minute long video that explains in detail how Fold at Home works to help the scientists that are trying to deal with the COVID-19 situation. Well, actually, you can use it for a lot of stuff, but right now its default is to work on that project because that's fairly pressing. And Exegius put out Gathering All Engineering Materials in Colonia, a seven minute long how-to guide check it out. Which brings us to Monday, March 23rd. We kick off Monday with the Loose Screws podcast interview series, an interview with community manager for Frontier Development, Stephen Benedetti. Amazing stuff and well worth a listen. Followed by a Rusty Dog Monday stream entitled Social Distancing for four and a half hours. He works on a social distance build that lets him pew pew from far away. Fun stuff. Then we have Down to Earth Astronomy with Hello Dave, episode 141, seven minutes long. Frontier Development is working from home and streams are on hold for now. The EIC, Operation Helping Hand, and Down to Earth Astronomy, foldathome.org. Sign up. Then we have a pair of Commander Sanderling videos. The first one is a short ASP scout run for Madrax. It's a six minute long video and the master of flight assist soft at Palmesh showing off what a scout can do. Surprising actually. ASP scout, not a bad ship to fly FAO. The second video was Commander Satterling's 805 meters per second race eagle flight assist off in the trenches of a Coriolis. This one sort of made me almost lose my lunch. That was crazy, crazy stuff. And uh, yeah, man, check it out. Commander Avasa over at the AXI put out the Type 10 Defender AX review, eight minute long. The TLDR is that the Type 10 is trash for AX. Jayzod put out a pair of videos, some PvP. First, him versus a crate, and then him versus a Desiad ganker, Herlev. Maybe Steven Benedetti should put out a Dear Herlev video. And of course, it can't be Monday night without Sidewinder Slaughter. Uh, Commander Exegius's Level 11 group sponsors every Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and it's repeated every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. UTC time for the Europeans. Go have some consequence-free PvP fun. Learn how to do it. It's a blast. Which brings us to Tuesday, March 24th. We have a pair of offerings from Commander Exegius. First is a five minute long video called Ship Builds, the T9 Three Ways, Hauler, Miner, and Battle Cow. The second is his Exegius Tutorial Tuesday stream, Laser Wing Mining for two hours. Followed by a 13 minute long video by Obsidian Ant, Space Games to Play While Stuck at Home. He goes over Elite Dangerous, X4 Foundations, Rebel Galaxy, Eve, No Man's Sky, Star Citizens, Dolores, and Space Engineers. Check it out. And then we have JN Tracks, Distant Screws Expedition Episode 5, a four hour long live stream of just a bunch of silliness while we cruise around the galaxy. 
Which brings us to Lave Radio Podcast, episode 282. They talk about virtual ECM 20. Grant walks people through the plan so far for the virtual ECM to come. They do a community roundup. They do the community question discussion. What Galnut headline would you like to write? And a power play discussion, followed by the not so great British Bake Off. This was, of course, followed by Galnet News Digest, the episode for March 26, 3306. EIC offers free engineer unlock rares to help out now until April 18th. New Guardian Ruins found in a cluster near the Galactic Core, also near Braintree Forests, and Cannon on the hunt for a new special different type of Guardian site, as well as a, an interesting little project Cannon has going, trying to jump the Gnosis into neutron stars or white dwarf uh, jet cones to see what happens. And the big red button at home, the Fuel Rats, Cannon, and everybody else is joining Folding at Home to help fight the outbreak. Galnet News Digest Radio. He made up the news this one last week, so you don't have to. And next week, he gets actual stuff to talk about. I, for one, can't wait to see what he does. There was an interesting post on Steam with regard to the Helion game. The project died. The game will be free from March 27th to March 30th, and then it will not be available anywhere. So go during those days and get yourself a free, cool-looking little spaceship game while you can. And lastly, Down to Earth Astronomy put out his Tuesday stream, working for Terra X with Down to Earth Astronomy, two and a half hours. Check it out. Which brings us to Wednesday, March 25th. Down to Earth Astronomy put out, I visit a Type 1A supernova in Elite Dangerous, 12 minute long video. He explains what a Type 1A supernova is and why it's so interesting. This one's bound to get a reaction. Commander Guru951 put out a public apology. I did not find Raxla, 11 minutes long. He talks about the uh, sort of hoax situation where a year ago he claimed that he found Raxla and went from being uh, sort of a uh, very well-respected member of Canon Interstellar Research Group to a sort of social pariah. And Sepulcher Geist put out getting Isinor permit for rare data materials. 14 minute long video where he shows why it's good to have the Isinor permit and goes out and gets it. Which brings us to Thursday, March 26th, the date of this recording. We started the day off as we always do with Commander Burr with his Thursday Breakfast Club. Burr and Rini were joined by Lord Tywin and Primetime Casual. They had some fun with the phenomenon in the Lagrange uh, lightning clouds as well as dueling quizzes. Sepulcher Geist put out a little four minute long video, a tutorial on how to use the FSS scanner to discover everything in a system. An article was put out by Science and Nature. NASA's $1 billion Jupiter probe just sent back dazzling photos of the giant planet and its great red spot. You really owe it to yourself to go check those out. They're amazing. Commander Plater put out a seven minute long video, The Plasma Vet. He shows you his build for a souped up plasma vet. That's actually kind of awesome. Which brings us to the main event, the reason you're all here. Steven Benedetti from Frontier Developments made a post on the forums, fleet carrier content reveal announcement, quote, we're thrilled to announce that the first look at the upcoming fleet carrier update will be coming to your screens on Thursday, April 2nd. Lead server developer Dav Stott and game designer Luke Betterton will join us on a special video to talk us through what these vast vessels are and how they'll be shaking up the galaxy. Since the initial reveal of fleet carriers, we've examined the concept of predefined loadouts and decided to invest additional time to ensure that fleet carriers carriers offer the same level of flexibility and customization as other ships within Elite Dangerous. We've done this by adding more loadout options to make your carrier unique and allow for player-to-player -player interaction like you've never seen before in Elite Dangerous. Squirming in your cockpit chair wanting to know more details? Here is some key information on fleet carriers, but for the entire content reveal, Tune in to our pre-recorded stream on YouTube on the 2nd of April at 6 p.m. UTC. 
Although we won't be live, our team will be there in the chat to answer any questions that you may have. One of our most frequent questions about fleet carriers was, how much do they cost? Fleet carriers will be a lucrative investment costing five billion credits at launch. Fleet carriers are individually owned and feature 16 landing pads of varying sizes for other players to dock at. Fleet carriers use a new fuel, tritium, to jump from system to system. Fleet carriers have a maximum jump range of 500 light years at any one time, with the ability to jump whenever the owner wants. However, they will have to build up and cool down period between jumps. You can manage your carrier's finances by setting tariffs and adjusting the buying and selling prices for commodities traded in its market. As it currently stands, we are aiming to launch the Fleet Carriers update in June and we'll be calling all commanders to experience Fleet Carriers as both visitors and owners in two upcoming public betas before the update is live. The first beta will begin on April 7th for PC only and the second beta, which will be launched on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation, will take place in May. Please note that there is a chance that these timeframes may change slightly in coming weeks, but we'll keep you up to date on the specific times, dates, and instructions. Now it goes without saying that I have posted a link to the actual forum post so that you can go read it for yourself. But for a line by line dissection of this announcement, along with a detailed conversation speculating about everything that this could possibly mean, tune in to the Loose Screws podcast tonight. And don't forget to bring your tinfoil hats because we're going deep. So immediately following this announcement, there was a flurry of activity as everybody rushed out to get their hot take. Down to Earth Astronomy put out Fleet Carrier's Price and Beta Announced 11 minute long video. Obsidian Ant put out Fleet Carrier Release Date Announced a six minute long video. And Avasa over at the AXI put out the AX debrief on March 26th, 2020 for eight minutes long. He talked about Operation Ida update, the video that he did on the Type 10 AX review, the weekly tip cold orbiting flight assist off, and the Science Hub update interceptor types, damages, and DR variants, followed by the rank ups, and then he cut into his special announcement of Fleet Carrier Announcement Stream April 2nd. And the last video we have for you tonight is Anna Barrick. He demonstrates why white dwarfs are not to be trifled with with a five minute long video. Thankfully, he had just turned in his exploration data sometime within an hour of that video. All's quiet on the anti-Xeno front, so that's going to wrap it up for us tonight. Stay tuned on Monday for the Colin Ford Commander Phoenix to Fire interview. The host of Lave Radio gives his thoughts on what's to come for Elite Dangerous. If you're hearing this episode on the podcast feed and you'd like to check it out on YouTube, the YouTube link is tinyurl.com forward slash Elite Week 3306. The Elite Week email is EliteWeek3306 at gmail.com. But you can also leave any thoughts or suggestions in the comment section of the YouTube video. Elite Week is part of the Loose Screws Podcast Network feed. You can find it at anchor.fm forward slash loose screws on whatever format you prefer. And the Loose Screws podcast website is www.loosescrewsed.com. The Discord is tinyurl.com forward slash loose screws podcast. The video component tonight was provided by Alec Turner. Check him out at youtube.com forward slash Alec Turner. And the Buckyball Race Club Discord is discord.gg forward slash YWXCSCF. I actually read that all out because I love the Buckyballers. And to play us out tonight, I give you Ship in a Bottle by Commander Toko So from his album Dreams from Beyond the Frontier. Hope you enjoy it. See you next week.
sat there Just going back and forth in this old boat Just like a ship in a bottle You came round Hopped on the bridge and took command And so we sailed into the night Set the course on my own Didn't know which way was North Star Or even Sagittarius Lake I couldn't get at all on my own Didn't know which way was North Star Or even Sagittarius Lake We set sail And I See, but just floating free from the bottom And you said, let's just see Where the jump takes us all together Let's jump together And the systems fell, we scanned them all We put our names against those first discoveries Wonderful memories The sectors pass, we own them all Some phenomenal, more notable We took some shots to show our friends Some things they won't believe All the things that I have seen All the places I have been Oh, I have crossed the void They won't believe Going back and forth in this old boat Just like a ship in a bottle You came round Hopped on the bridge and took command And so we sailed into the night